reality of, I believe our attorney general has brought it to our attention. Day it's going to go out. It'll be with the election administrator's offices imprimatur of this is correct. These people are not currently registered. So there's no, it reduces that problem of duplicate forms and waste. So let me move on. Larry, let me ask. There's a big issue today of the legality, illegality of, I believe our attorney general has brought it to our attention. You have reviewed the AG opinion, and you say that it is distinguishable in regards to the efforts today. The opinion the AG relies on, State versus Hollins, dealt with the mailing of applications to vote by mail. We are discussing voter registration applications. So at this Two point, as counsel for the court, do you see any legal impediments in the court moving forward to approve? So, Judge, let me be clear. The Attorney General can file a lawsuit. And that's the court system. And we have that's to abide by the rule of law. And if a yes. higher court says we can't do this, we can't. I just need to know, with your best faith effort, we can at least move forward, understanding that we perhaps have a difference of opinion as to the opinion that he has rendered from his office in regards to today's vote. Reading the Attorney General's review of the issues, I disagree with the basis of that the Attorney General set forth. That's just let's a do, disagree let's, of an attorney. All right, let's move disagree. forward with the next big discussion that's been discussed all morning long. That's the purchasing uh, laws. So I guess Thomas, Patricia, Larry, Sir. this ACF was approved. Was it approved by the county manager's office? Y'all helped put these agendas together. Y'all are very careful on how these ACFs are phrased and worded. Was this approved uh, with you? from the county manager's The office. caption was reviewed. Uh, we do approve it. Uh, it does give that flexibility to take some of the specifics into that contract that we will work on uh, to strengthen up those areas that we've heard uh, from the dais today. So it allows for the purchasing agent to move forward with the creation of the PO, and then we can work on that contract language with, with the Well, DA's and I'm office. asking everybody who was in that, that thought process. Ms. Patricia Torres, did you review and approve the ACF that's on the agenda for today. Yes, sir. Mr. Larry, did you have an opportunity to review the ACF and approve as to form? So, Judge, I review the caption for public notice purposes. I do not put it together. I do not review it for substance. I view it, I review it for public notice purposes. To make sure compliance with the Open, Open Meetings, Meetings Act. Act. Correct. So, Judge. in regards to your pit rendering, you say that it's in compliance with the Open Meetings Act. Judging by the number of individuals showing up today, I think it certainly complied with the Open Meetings Act. Okay. And then, um, Thomas and Patricia, you would be affirming on the record that this is in compliance with the competitive bidding laws. Correct, Patricia? Yes, sir. Thank you. Let me go back to you, Mr. Smith, for a little follow-up. You've been mentioning the Secretary of State. I just need to know, are you just name dropping? It appears that you have been working with the Secretary of State. Help me understand, again, I don't need to repeat everything, but you've made allusions or references to Secretary of State, which is an appointee of the governor, correct? Uh, yes, Judge. Uh, so what, what is your relationship with the corporation, the nonprofit, that is being asked to approve the contract today? The... Uh since 2018, I've worked with them in a variety of capacities on this general idea of improving voter registration and websites. Uh, we've helped them uh, improve their websites and some of their offerings so that people can go online, for example, and request. Did you get contracts approved through the Secretary of uh, State? Some of those were done as, like, volunteer work uh, on their behalf. Some of those are agreements, and we bid on a contract that ended up being, uh, I believe, canceled related to their subscription to ERIC back in 2019. The state voted to join ERIC. Uh, the state then subsequently voted to leave uh, a few years later. Have you been banned from contracting with the Secretary of State for the no, state not of all, Texas? Judge. Or and anywhere. And you also would stand under oath that you are consulted as an expert in voter registration? Yes, Judge. 
By the Secretary of State? By the Secretary of State. Of I would assume there's states. been, as I know, there's been several Secretary of State. There have been several. Uh, we mostly work with the Elections Division Office, um, and uh, but we have spoken with, it uh, be hard for me to remember at this point, three of the last six, I think. There's a bunch of them. I, I don't know all of them. All right. So let me then close with this. I think it's time to vote up or down. So I'm going to ask the motion to table to go first. Hold on, Commissioner Moody. Um, I have heard th throughout this past year, and I think this court can take judicial notice, we all were here, we have heard constant complaints from the community in regards to voter registration. We know, and I think the numbers turn out, that from the last presidential, I guess, 2020 election uh, could be considered a high mark in voter turnout. But since then, voter turnout has been abysmal. I don't know if that's directly related to voter registration, but it, it just makes common sense to me that voter registration, voter turnout have to go hand in hand. If you don't have registered voters, then you ain't got voters. And so, uh, I want to put on record and let the public know that this is an effort, Mr. Smith, and this is an effort, Commissioner Rodriguez, and the fact you've taken the lead on this, is that this is a nonpartisan way to increase voter turnout in the 2024 election. Is that a true statement or not, Mr. Smith? Yes, Judge. Commissioner Rodriguez? Yes, Judge. Commissioner Moody? So I just wanted to, to ask one question back to the purchasing agent and then uh, make one uh, comment um, in closing. You, you responded to the judge on this being in compliance with purchasing requirements. I assume you're talking about the sole source. Yes. What, what is that based on? So <clears throat> the uh, sole source justification sort of, uh, criteria um, it's uh, based on existence of patents or copyright secret processes of mon monopolies, which is um, the proprietary, proprietary data unique of service of offerings from CGS. And so that decision was based off of uh, what was sent by CGS, correct? Correct. And um, if was I may, it based on any other investigation besides what CGS sent? Or if I may, uh, once I did receive the request, um, I, d I made a good faith effort <clears throat> in searching for other uh, suppliers to um, who do provide this, and I did not find that. So I made my own research. You I did, completed my own research. You did a Google say. search? Is well, that I said? went through the cooperative agreements. I went through um, a database that we have access to to, to provide uh, to access um, the same services a vendor who provides the same services, and I did not find it. Okay. Well, thank you, Patty. I'm pretty sure I could find somebody by this afternoon to, to do this, but um, I'd just like to make one comment for the record, Judge, um, and just so everybody knows, uh, I'm not putting words in anyone's mouth, this isn't fake news, but I texted Jackie since she had to leave, and I say, can I say publicly that you are opposed to this item? She said, yes, absolutely. I rest. Okay. Commissioner Calvert, thank you very much. This has been a healthy debate. This is what democracy is all about. I know it's gotten long, but we at least live in a country where we can have these conversations so long as we keep the vote <clears throat> um, with uh, ethics and, and, we keep it, uh, and we keep it clean. Um, I'm an idealist when it comes to our election system. I'm an idealist working in... Uh, <laughs> in a profession that isn't ideal. <laughs> uh, and what I mean by that, as, a, as an idealist in this, the, the, this democratic experiment, small d, is that our registration process in the election process should be as nonpartisan as the voting machines in the voting process. Now, we've seen some some issues with voting machines this year getting into, I think, a misinformation. But in an ideal world, we would have 
our registration process as nonpartisan as we generally have our, our, our voting machine process. That's, that's an ideal world. Um, I do believe that the, that the market would have brought us even coalitions, joint ventures of folks who would have come together to make bids and, uh, you know, for this particular contract. I can think of many as a former political consultant um, that would do that. Um, you know, when there are conflicts of interest, we have to remove ourselves from those conflicts of interest. So, you know, if I'm in a, you know, a company and, you know, it's, it just seems like there's going to be some rigmarole. I, I recuse myself. I give it over to somebody else uh, to keep the smear from from hitting. If my intent, if my intent is to do the right thing and and be that idealist, where it's beyond reproach and beyond criticism, then there is a conflict of interest point. There is a recusal point that could be taken. So, um, you know. Look, the social media world, you know, some people say, well, look, you know, you've got everything on X. Um, but I know that Elon Musk leans a certain way, you know, and I take that into consideration and in how I do business, where I do business, all that kind of good stuff. And so um, I think if we get a lawsuit, we're probably going to delay this anyway. Um, there could be an injunction from the attorney general on the administration of this contract um, anyway. I mean, while we sort it out, it could take, it, it would frankly be just walking up to October and then it's all over. So in this messy process, I would have liked to have us come to some consensus, a, you know, a consensus, either it's a coalition of groups doing voter registration or, or more resources for the elections department you know, I would have preferred a consensus process because it's there's so much distrust in the elections. There's so much that's going on in the community with, with misinformation. We don't help heal that bridge when a 45, 50% of the community has these doubts. And we've got to start doing that. We've got to start working together to make consensus. So. I will. I believe in registration. I believe there can be nonpartisan registration from a democratic court, but I'm not sure this is the right vendor and the right way to go about it. So for that, I will have to abstain. Um, I support the motion to table to get the consensus, to get this right, to work with the elections administrator, get the staffing correct, to make sure the legal traps. Because we have a we have a superficial legal review. We have a you know it's you know corrected for caption, but we, we, we've got, you know, some good case law, but it, it's not as deep as maybe we need to get. We could have had calls to the Attorney General's office. What are the concerns you're going to sue about? Anyway, there's going to be unprecedented election contests. There's going to be lawsuits up the wazoo on this particular um, ballot. And if the ballot is, if we get sued because the AG or a candidate or whoever thinks that we had illegal voters or part of this, and I'm not saying that would happen. I don't mean to, I'm just saying it's likely to happen, right? And so in mitigating risk at a time that there's a lot of stuff out there, I think we have to, uh, as much as I, you know, I was supportive in the beginning, I didn't know some of the background. I'm grateful. That's why this democracy is important because the community brought to us things that we needed to know. And in my humble opinion, um, our registration process has to be as, as nonpartisan as our voting machine process. And that's all I'm going to say on that. Thank you. Point, point of order, Commissioner Calvert, in light of your abstention, is that in regards to the table? If it oh, is, I'll, are, are I'll, you I'll, withdrawing your second? No, or? no, I'm not. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, I'll, I'll vote on the, on the tabling in just a moment. All yeah. right. Any further discussion? I'm bringing the motion to table. Call for a vote. In regards to the motion to table, the motion to approve the ACF under item 66, all those in favor signify by, signif signify by saying aye. aye, aye. No, hold on, time out. I need to, I'm gonna do roll call. I wanna go roll call. Let's, let's back out. On the motion to table, the motion 66, Commissioner Cliff Lors. I'm against tabling this. No. 
Commissioner Rodriguez? No. Commissioner Moody? Yes. Commissioner Calvert? Aye. The judge says no. Motion table fails. We now bring up the motion to approve. A call for a vote. Any further discussion? Again, roll call. Commissioner Clay Flores? I was happy to second. Aye. Commissioner Rodriguez? Aye. Commissioner Moody? No. Commissioner Calvert? The judge votes aye. Motion carries. All right, let's get on.